The Epistle to the Ephesians, Chapter 5, Lesson 6 In studying this chapter, 1. To see the importance of walking in love, light, and wisdom. 2. To understand the responsibilities wives and husbands have towards each other. 3. To appreciate the high esteem and great love the Lord has for His Church. Paul continues to exhort Christians to walk in a manner worthy of their calling. See 4.1. Having described the need to walk in unity and purity, he now urges them to imitate God and walk in love with Christ as their example. Ephesians 5.1 and 2. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, Walk in love, even as Christ also loved you, and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God, for a sweet-smelling fa fragrance. Such love requires that all forms of immorality and filthy speech not even be named among them. Ephesians 5, 3-5 through five, but sexual immorality and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be mentioned among you, as becomes saints, nor filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not appropriate, but rather giving of thanks. Know this for sure, that no sexually immoral person, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Since the wrath of God is to come upon the sons of disobedience, Christians must not be deceived nor partake with those who engage in such evil deeds. Ephesians 5, 6 Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. Having passed from darkness to light and coming to Christ, we should also walk as children of light. Ephesians 5, 7, and 8 Therefore don't be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but are now light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. This includes producing the fruit of the Spirit, such as goodness, righteousness, and truth, thereby demonstrating what is acceptable to the Lord. Ephesians 5, 9, and 10 For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is well-pleasing to the Lord. We cannot participate in the shameful works of darkness, but instead must expose them. Ephesians 5, 11 and 12 Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather even reprove them for the things which are done by them in secret. It is a shame to even speak of. This we do by letting Christ's light shine in us, for such light will naturally make the darkness manifest by way of contrast. Ephesians 5, 13 and 14 But all things, when they are reproved, are revealed by the light, for everything that is revealed is light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. As the days are evil and the time is short. Christians must walk as wise and make the best use of their time. This requires an understanding of the Lord's will. Ephesians 5, 15-17 Therefore watch carefully how you walk, not as unwise but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore don't be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. Christians are also to be filled with the Spirit as evidenced by singing together, praying with thanksgiving, and submitting to one another in fear of God. Ephesians 5, 18 through 21. Don't be drunken with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and singing praises in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always concerning all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to God even the Father, subjecting yourselves one to another in the fear of Christ. The chapter ends with what we might describe as a call to 
walk in matrimonial harmony. Wives are exhorted to respect their husbands, submitting to them as to the Lord. Ephesians 5:22-24 Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, and Christ also is the head of the assembly, being himself the Savior of the body. But as the assembly is subject to Christ, so let the wives also be the, to their own husbands in everything. Husbands are commanded to love their wives as Christ loved the church, and even as they love their own bodies. Ephesians 5.25-26 Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the assembly, and gave himself up for it, that he might sanctify it, having cleansed it by the washing of water with the word. In the course of such instruction, Paul takes the opportunity to reveal the Lord's desire to present himself a glorious church, holy and without blemish, which is why he gave himself for it. Ephesians 5:27 through 29 that he might present the assembly to himself gloriously, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. Even so ought husbands also to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself, for no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord also does the assembly. Ephesians 5:30-33 Because we are members of his body of his flesh and bones for this cause a man will leave his father and mother and will be joined to his wife the two will become one flesh this mystery is great but i speak concerning christ and of the assembly nevertheless each of you must also love his own wife even as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This ends our study of the Epistle to the Ephesians, Chapter 5, Lesson 6.